Van Dyke Show. Starring Dick Van Dyke. Rosemary, Maury Amsterdam, Larry Matthews, and Mary Tyler Moore. Very uh, filling, nourishing, and uh, good. Didn't eat very much of it. I'm oh, sorry, honey. I've got a financial problem on my mind. Well, in that case, you'll be glad to hear that this delicious meal cost us 87 cents, which I think makes it fantastic. 87 cents? Yep. Inexpensive cut of beef, leftover string beans, sherry wine, a lot of wild herbs. Did like it, didn't you? Oh, yeah. It was the best 87 cent meal I ever had. I got one planned for tomorrow night that I'm hoping to bring in for under 70 cents. Chicken wings, fried rice, pearl onions, cream sauce, red radishes, and bread pudding. Boy, that sounds cheap. Honey, <laughs> <laughs> what's with all this bargain basement cooking? Bargain basement cooking? I call it creative cuisinery. It's a way of expressing myself. And saving money? Yeah, that too. Uh huh. Have you by any chance been talking to our accountant? Well, as a matter of fact, dear Sidney did call, and he said we're way over budget not to spend anything for a while. I talked to him today, too. He wasn't talking about food, he was just talking about things. <laughs> I'm not destitute. I know, but he did say not to buy anything we don't absolutely need. I even asked him about that broken spring you're fighting. He said to let the upholstery go for a while. Want some coffee? Can we afford it? Oh, <laughs> I don't understand this, honey. I make a good living. Why is it we always have to cut corners? You know, when we were first married, we lived in a one-room apartment on a lot less. Why didn't the money fly out the window then? Well, a lot more windows now. <laughs> Cream is twice as expensive. Honey, what am I anyway, a failure? Oh, good morning. Yuck. What are you complaining about? I was out with Herman Glimpshire last night. <laughs> You know something, fellas? What? I'm a failure. What brought you to that happy conclusion? I work hard, but I never have any money when I need it, so I must be a failure. Hey, wait a minute, you're the head writer. If you're a failure, that would make me an assistant failure. <laughs> Look at me. Rob, you're a failure. <laughs> okay, what brought this on all of a sudden? No, wait, wait, let me guess. Uh, you either had a fight with Laura or you got a curt note from the revenue department. Neither one. But I had such an argument with myself driving down here, I almost blew my top. Hey, speaking of blowing your top, ta-da! <laughs> Would you ask Rumpelstiltskin to crawl back up to his loft? <laughs> Rob, our new sponsor is here to meet us. New sponsor? Yes, Darling Products bought half of our show for next season. Darling Products? Yes, the president wants to meet all the people connected with the show. What's his name, Mel? Jim Darling. Jim Darling? What kind of a name is that for a president? Hey, was he named after the products or were the products named after him? No, I've seen him, buddy, and the products were named after him. Yeah? Jim Darling. I think I know him. Well, of course you do. His picture's been on magazine covers all year. I'll bring him in. I think I, I know him personally. Really? Jim Darling. Jim Darling. Hey, maybe it was Larry Lovely. <laughs> Well, Won't you come in, Mr. Darling? These are our writers. Hi. Miss Sally Rogers. Oh, I love your products. <laughs> I love your attitude. And I'm this... Buddy Sorrell. I I'm... can't wait to see your name at the bottom of my paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> this is our head writer, Rob Petrie. Mr. Petrie. Jim Darling. Excuse me for staring at you, but I'm sure I know you. Well, of course you do. He's one of our nation's most dynamic businessmen. And a boy, Mel. Keep a simple tongue on his boots. <laughs> You know, I, I think I know you, too. Of course. Do you remember a girl named Laura? Laura. And her last name was uh, Laura Meehan. Laura Meehan. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you, did you know Laura? Know her? Well, you're talking about one of the great memories of my life. I am? Uh, Laura Meehan. Mm, what a figure she had. You know, if I knew where she was, I'd propose to her right at the spot. Uh, whatever happened to her? Uh, well, I uh, married her. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. She likes me. <laughs> you like
lucky dog. Listen, listen, is, is she still uh, as attractive? Oh, yes, yes, she's very attractive, very. Well, yeah, but, you know, uh, all older and uh, very settled. <laughs> I'd love to see her. Yeah, well, I'm sure she'd love to see you. <laughs> well, then, uh, what's your stop us? Listen, why don't you all drop up to my penthouse tomorrow night? We'll break open some champagne and toast my sponsoring the show. Wonderful. And wonderful. I'll get to see Laura Mean again. Uh, Laura Petrie. Well, I'll always think of her as little Laura Mean. Oh, well, I always think of her as big Laura Petrie. <laughs> tomorrow night, then? Uh, on behalf of our entire company, I accept with pleasure. Uh, wonderful, uh, wonderful. Uh, uh, Mr. Darling, may I bring an escort? An escort? Well, you can bring an escort if you like, but I must inform you I'm not married. I'm coming along. <laughs> Say, is this uh, business or pleasure? Strictly pleasure. Good, I'll leave my wife home. <laughs> Rob, you will bring Laura. Oh, uh, Jim, I, uh, I'll, I'll certainly check that. You uh, never got married, huh? Well, how could I? You got my girl. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow night. Are uh, you coming, uh, Cooley? Uh, yes, darling. Uh, Jim. <laughs> Okay, fellas, what do you say? We get to work? That's a good idea. <sighs> Boy, what a doll. I say, you gotta have a sponsor. That's the kind of a sponsor to have. Are you sure you two fellas have to go to that party tomorrow night? What are you trying to do, narrow it down to just him and you? If possible, yes. <laughs> I wonder if the janitor of a building is like the captain of a ship. What? I mean, can he marry us? <laughs> I'd like a simple basement wedding, just the immediate help. <laughs> Buddy, Rob, you two guys have to go. Why don't you stay home? Look, I'm your friend, right? I can't say no when it comes to a sponsor. All right, how about you, Rob? Well, I don't... I could go. I know Laura would love to go, but I don't think she'll probably make it. Why not? Because I ain't gonna tell her about it. <laughs> Well, they're all chipped and cracked. As long as we're going to eat 70-cent meals, can't we at least eat off our good dinnerware? Well, darling, if we did that, then our good dinnerware would get chipped and cracked, and we'd have bad good dinnerware. <laughs> well, then why don't we buy some new everyday stuff? Well, I was going to, dear, but then Sidney's called. I know, I know. Our accountant says we can't afford it. Well, at least not for another month. Another month? I'd like to take every one of these and throw them in a trash can. Don't be so angry at our poor little dishes with the cute raspberries on them. Because these poor little dishes with the cute little raspberries on them are chipped and cracked, and every chip and crack reminds me of our sad financial state. That's why. Wow, what started you on that again? No, nothing. <coughs> Honey, well, what are we doing tomorrow night? Bridge night, Millie and Jerry. We disappointed them three weeks in a row, so I hope you haven't made other plans. No, sir, no. <laughs> we committed ourselves to our good neighbors, and we're going to live up to that commitment. The world would be a lot better if everybody was committed. I mean, <laughs> everybody lived up to their commitments. I mean, what's more important, old friends or, or very old friends? What on earth are you talking what about? Happened, honey? Sally, what am I wearing? To what? Who? <laughs> yeah, sure, uh, Rob told me about it. I just forgot for the moment. Uh, I haven't decided what to wear, but um, I'll call you and let you know, all right? Bye-bye. Say, guess who came to the office today? <laughs> Why didn't you tell me Jim Darling was in town? I did. When? I asked you what we're doing tomorrow night, honey. Why would I ask you that if it wasn't on account of Jim Darling? You never mentioned his name. I didn't? No. Well, I, mean, I asked you what we're going to do tomorrow night. You said we're playing bridge with Millie and Jerry, and, and, you, and you said how uh, important it was to honor commitments. No, you said that. Well, yeah, yeah, I said that. <laughs> but I thought you'd probably rather, well, play bridge and go to a stuffy old cocktail party with, you know, an old flame. <laughs> Let me finish those dishes. No, uh, no, I can do it. How's Jim look? Well, he's uh, old. <laughs> he's, well, he's all uh, gray around the temple. Gray at the temple, huh? Well, not you. Not you would. Not that kind of gray. You wouldn't. Look, it's got green in it. <laughs> Gee, you know, 
it's a shame we're busy tomorrow night. I'd really love to see him again. You would? <laughs> well, I, Julie, you want to go? We'll, we can go. Oh, I don't know, darling. It might be uncomfortable for you. Why, why would he be uncomfortable for me? I don't want to be uncomfortable, honey. I know you love me. I'll, I'll call Jerry and Billy and tell them that we'll uh, play Friday. You mean it? Well, sure. I mean, he's anxious to see you. And you're anxious to uh, see him, aren't you? You sure you won't get insanely jealous and sit in the corner and mumble? Oh, come on, honey. You know darn well I'm not a mumbler. I want to go to a party, so I have to go to a party. I'll... <laughs> okay. Huh? We're mumbling. Oh, I said I, that I would like to go to the party, honey. Really, I would. So we'll, we'll, we'll go. Richie, what are you doing out of bed? Water. Sure, darling. Rich, why do you want to drink the water? Is your throat dry? Yeah, it's dry. Honey, did you hear what Rich said? His throat's dry. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Dry throat. So? Well, honey, do you think we ought to leave him with a sitter when he might be brewing up something here? Oh, darling, it's probably nothing. Yeah, well, I'll tell you that every... all eight of his nasal cavities are clogged with a pair of these eyes. Yeah, they're all stuffed. Can I stay home from school? Well, we'll see about that in the morning, young man. Back to bed. Honey, uh, you think, uh, you know, I better call Jim and uh, tell him we can't make it. Whatever you say, dear. Well, you're right. I will. I'm going to call him. He'll be disappointed he can't see you, honey, but... <laughs> Hello, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Jim Darling, please. Hey, Jim? Uh, Rob Petrie. Yeah. Hey, li listen, Jim, we would love to come to that little bash of yours tomorrow night, but we our kid's sick. No, no, nothing serious, just a uh, little old nasal passages. Yeah, all eight of them. <laughs> well, Jim, you know, we don't like to leave him when he's feeling kind of under the weather, you know. It's, might leave emotional scars or something. <laughs> <Like that. laughs> well, I know it. Listen, to, uh, Laura's going to feel awful. It's a shame. She wanted so much to see you. It's a pity you couldn't have come up here. I said, it's a pity you couldn't have, uh, you know, well, yeah, you can. But listen, Jim, it's a, a long, long drive up here. It's, you know, we're in 8.30. Well, uh, yeah. So you'll bring the whole party right, right up at our house. Wonderful. Yeah, swell, Jim. <laughs> Bye. Who needs a handsome millionaire coming up here examining my chip dishes, my lumpy couch, and my married wife? <laughs> I thought it come to this. Laura and I supported by one of her old boyfriends. Yuck! Hi, honey! <laughs> hey, honey, good news. I called Jim, I talked him into bringing a whole party up here. Isn't that wonderful? Huh? <laughs> potato chips, corn, curlies, wheat, whippies, peanut pippies, and potato poopies. <laughs> Stuff gets cuter every year. Bring ice, cola, ginger ale, club soda, clean glasses, nuts. I checked everything, cigarettes, ice cubes, cola, everything's perfect. Good. Kind of a shame, too. Why? Because I'm calling off the party. You're not wearing that dress. What's wrong with this dress? Oh, honey, I, it's the fabrics. What's the matter with the fabric? Well, there's not enough of it. <laughs> Honey, you go in the other room and, and put on a nice conservative business suit. <laughs> I've worn this dress a hundred times and you never complained before. Yeah, well, I've let you get away with it, that's all. Oh, my goodness. I'll get that you put on a sweater or a lumberjack. Or <laughs> Hi. Hi. Oh, it's you. Well, I'm sorry. Next time I try to be somebody more important. No, I, I was expecting... I know, you were expecting your sponsor. Yeah. Hi, Laura. Hi, Jerry. Wow. Hi, Jerry. Oh, you look so nice. Thank you. You know, you're right. It's better without the matching jacket. What matching? Is there a matching jacket? Where is the matching jacket? Now, don't you dare cover up those beautiful shoulders. You want to impress your sponsor, don't you? Uh, Jerry, how about a corn curly? Don't you have any potato poopies? Yes, they're potato poopies. <laughs> Hi, Rob. Hi, Rob. Hi, Hi, buddy. Hi. Hi, Jim. Hey, what, what do you want, Andrew, for this party, Sal? Uh, why in the kitchen do I have food there? Hello, Jim. Laura, me. Jim, darling. 
Darling. Darling? That's his name. She wouldn't call him that. <laughs> it's so wonderful seeing you. Oh, Jim, it's wonderful seeing you, too. My goodness. Hey, if you get a few feet apart, you can see each other better. <laughs> You know, you haven't changed a bit. If anything, you're more beautiful. Oh, thank you, Jim. And you're looking wonderful. Look at that tan, <laughs> Hey, Jim, Ron. come here. I want you to meet some wonderful people. This is Jerry and Billy Helper, our neighbors. Jerry, how are you? Nice to be and this is our new sponsor, Jim Darling. Wait a minute. Let's get that right. Jim, our darling sponsor. <laughs> come on, everyone. Sit down. Oh, okay. Well, uh, Laura, Hey, Jim, uh, sit here. This is what <laughs> Uh, buddy, where's the uh, pickles? She's taking a course in cooking. She's stayed home. She's rehearsing breakfast. <laughs> you know, this is a lovely home you have here. Oh, thank you. That's uh, my favorite Picasso. I have it also. Oh, do you have one of those prints? Well, <laughs> no. He has the original. Oh. Oh, well, uh, uh, a print has a lot of advantages. If the house blows up, I'm only out two bucks. <laughs> thank you. I hope you find it satisfactory, sir. I didn't have time to chew. I'm sure it'll be all right, Edward. Wonderful lad. Does everything for me. I don't know what I'd do without him. Yeah, I, uh, I know what you mean. I, I feel the same way about Walter. Who's Walter? Oh, Walter's been with us for years. He's like part of the family. But well, where have you been hiding him? Walter's the man who comes in once a month to do the woodwork. Yeah. I don't know what I'd do without him. Oh, is that his name? He does our windows. Rob's such a kidder. <laughs> Well, uh, Jim, how long are you going to be in town? Not long. I'm uh, due in Australia very soon. Oh, wonderful. Well, I mean, you know, Australia is beautiful this time of the week. <laughs> oh, uh, by the way, Jim, your plane tickets will be on your desk tomorrow morning. Oh, thank you. No trouble at all? Let's see, Australia, Bangkok, and then right on to Hong Kong, all jets. That'll get me in Hong Kong just in time for the Chinese New Year. Gee, imagine being in Hong Kong for Chinese New Year's. It must be exciting to make trips like that. I'm uh, planning a long trip next month with Laura. Really? Where are you going? Well, uh, Jim, the uh, first leg of the trip will take us to White Plains and the Mount Kisco, Peekskill, right out of Wurtsboro, and that'll get us to uh, Grossinger's in time for Hanukkah. <laughs> Hello? Yes, he is. Just a moment, please. Jim, it's for you, long distance, Melbourne. Australia, wow. I, I hope you don't mind. I gave him your number. No, I'd l like Australia to have my number. <laughs> yes, uh, this is he. I'm ready, Australia. Hello? Yes, what's the good news, Sir Douglas? Hey, Sir Douglas, how about that? A man with a title talking to a house with a mortgage. Now that's democracy. Well, it was nice to hear your voice again. Uh-huh. Yes, well, I've uh, talked to my associates in London, and uh, we'll take uh, 32,000 more shares. Boy, that's what I call real class. A guy talks long distance, you don't even holler. Uh, regards to Lady Pennant. Right, bye-bye. I'm sorry, Rob. Sorry, listen, when news of that phone call gets out on the street, real estate values are gonna go sky high. <laughs> Say, I, uh, it uh, reminds me, I, I got to call Sydney. Oh, Australia? No, Sydney Blakeman, my accountant. <laughs> He's going to buy me about 32,000 uh, shares. potato poopies? Of uh, potato poopies, yeah. Uh, just one, I've got to watch my figure, you know. Here, I'll uh, take some of those, honey. I can handle them. Uh, tennis, golf, handball, that's what keeps me trim. Mm. When do I have time for those things? Well, a man like you should take time for things like tennis and golf and... Marriage. <laughs> well, I don't care much for tennis or golf, but I'd get married in a minute if I could find another girl like Laura. How about another girl like Sally? Another girl? How about Sally? <laughs> I'll have some more of those, Laura Darling. Laura Darling? Hey, that would have been her name if she married you. Laura Darling. And everything would have been entirely different. And Lady Pamela would be right here in this room eating corn poopies and potato curdlies and everything. <laughs> I'd have been floating on a boat out in the Mediterranean. And you'd have been thrown overboard by now. <laughs> hey, Jim, do you own a yacht? Just a small one, yeah. Jim, Jim, how do you get to be so successful? I mean, is there a magic formula? Well, I don't think there's any one formula for success. It's a combination of luck and persistence and the willingness to gamble. Get rich relatives. <laughs> well, Jim, as I remember, <laughs> your parents weren't wealthy, were they? No, as a matter of fact, they weren't. The dad had a little grocery, and I was born right in the back of the store. Oh, is that? Did I ever tell you I was born in the back of a grocery store, too? Oh, really? Yeah, it was because we didn't have a front of a grocery store. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were uh, really uh, pretty poor in those days. Uh, things were pretty tough. Very poor. Yeah, you think you were poor? My family was so poor, the church mouse lived in our house. <laughs> hey, uh, your father was the first to carry frozen foods in his grocery store, wasn't That's he? That's right, he was one of the first. Uh, there weren't too many freezers in those days, so we had to scrape a little money together. And we bought some freezers and rented them out, and we were on our way. Oh, this is exciting. 
exciting. Yeah, it's a regular ratio algae story. <laughs> Alger. <laughs> Algae's that junk at the bottom of a fish tank. <laughs> Jim? Well, uh, we went into some other appliances, you know, diversified, and then we went international. I guess that's about it. Gee, the whole, whole thing started with freezers, huh? Yeah. Man, that's cool, huh? <laughs> you know something, Jim? Jerry's a guy a lot like you, you know, trying new things all the time. He's the first dentist in our block to, to play Montevani records while he's drilling. Yeah, that's, that's right. Oh, of course, it's nothing compared to what you've done, Jim. Oh, I'll second that. Boy, for a man of his age and handsomeness, he's accomplished more than anybody I know. Oh, I don't know about that. Uh, would anyone like some coffee? Uh, yes, as a matter of fact, I, I could use a cup. I'll get it. Uh... I'll, I'll help you, Laura. Well, Sally, I said I'm going to get it. Oh, boy, are you going to get it. <laughs> See you later. Thank you for a nice evening. Hey, Rob. Hey, thanks for the corn curdly. <laughs> Very interesting evening. Good night, Sal. Good night, Laura. It was wonderful seeing you again. Thank you, Jim. Rob, thank you so much for your hospitality. Uh, Jim, are you uh, still going to sponsor our show? Well, sure. Why not? Well, I thought... Uh, good night, Jim. Good night, Rob. Good night, Laura. Good night. Uh, take it easy. <laughs> good night. That's... Bye. <laughs> They're gone. <laughs> for what you did for me tonight. What are you talking about? You know very well what I'm talking about. Thank you for making this party a disaster. I turned it into a disaster? You certainly did. What did I do? What did you do? You're my wife, aren't you? So far. All right, as long as you're my wife. <laughs> will you please try and act like a wife? What? When I'm sick, you take care of me, don't you? You have cold compresses and you give me a thermometer and a hot chicken soup. Where were you when I needed you tonight? You weren't sick tonight. Oh, no? Don't you call paranoia a sickness? <laughs> paranoia? Yeah, paranoia. Persecution complex, insecurity, fear, and envy. Oh, boy. A good wife doesn't treat paranoia going around asking people if they want a potato poopy. <laughs> what did you want me to do? Well, honey, if you really wanted to help me, you should have done something dramatic. Pour hot coffee on me, set my hair on fire, anything. <laughs> only did one good thing this evening, and that was to prove to that millionaire with his hand-sewn shoes and his cashmere socks how lucky he was not to be married to a wife who would stand there and let her husband make a complete jackass of himself. You mean you were really aware of what you said? Oh, aware. Never in my 30-odd years of life have I been so embarrassed and humiliated and ashamed. You know, you could have taken me aside and quietly whispered to me that I have things that that millionaire hasn't got. I got a nice house and a charming son and a beautiful wife. Right now, if you had any compassion, you'd put your arms around me and tell me that you're as sorry for me as I am for myself. <laughs> Darling, I am. Well, oh, honey, the next time I start to put my foot in my mouth, will you please stop me? Well, I'm not sure. What do you mean? It's kind of interesting, very flattering to see a man destroy himself for the love of a beautiful woman. <laughs> Don't press your luck. What on earth are you doing? What does it look like? Breaking our dishes, but why? Just because some of them are chipped? No, because the chips and cracks in these dishes are the living symbols of my financial insecurity, and I don't like them around mocking me at mealtime. <laughs> you mean you'd feel more financially secure if we defied our accountant and bought new dishes? Very much. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Go.